If you want to buy a Mac Mini, this is the only video you need to watch, apart from my other Mac Mini videos, but just, just watch this one. I think the Mac Mini is Apple's greatest triumph, and that's because, look at it, it's just this little box which costs not very much for an Apple product, and gets you into the world of Mac OS, and it's very powerful, very malleable. You can do a lot with it, you can put it into lots of different scenarios, you can build your own rig around it. It's wonderful. And now we have a new version, which we've waited for this for a long time. We now have the M4 Mac Mini, which is a complete redesign. This is the M2 Mac Mini. I do have an M4 Mac Mini on the way. In fact, two of them. So if you don't want to miss my multiple videos about that particular Mac, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And on that note, guys, we have noticed that 87% of the people who watch this channel regularly aren't subscribed. So if you haven't hit that button yet, just give it a little click. However, with all this excitement around the M4 Mac Mini launch, we have got a bit of a problem now because we have the M1, the M2, the M2 Pro, the M4, and the M4 Pro Mac Mini. And that's quite a lot of buying decisions to be made. And in this video, I'm going to help you make the one that makes the most sense for you. Okay, first up we have the chip choice, and this is a bit simpler than you might think. So we have the M1, the M2, and the M4. There's no M3 Mac Mini, that didn't, that never existed basically, no idea why. But it's worth bearing in mind that you can only buy the M4 Mac Mini brand new from Apple. So if you're looking at the M1 or the M2, it's going to be the refurb store on Apple, or it's going to be the secondhand market. Now for that reason, I won't quote pricing for those two models in this video, because they can change at a moment's notice. However, it is simple, I think. Firstly, the M1 Mac Mini, I wouldn't bother with unless you've got a very, very small budget and it's not that important. This Mac Mini might just be a like a toy. It's, it's like a, something you want to play around with or it's just a second machine that doesn't matter too much. If that's the case, just go and get an M1 Mac Mini, save yourself loads of money, but keep watching this video because I think I can convince you that either the M2 or the M4 version is going to be better. And let's start with that M4 version. So basically it starts at 599, which is still a stupidly cheap price to get cheap in Apple terms to get into the macOS ecosystem. And for that, you get the M4 chip, 16 gig of unified memory, which is double what you got with the M2 version and a 256 gig storage. It's also worth noting that you can configure that to 32 gig of unified memory. The M2 version only went to 24. The M4 version also has two more CPU cores than the the M2 version, and it has a complete redesign. It's much smaller than this one. It's got USB-C ports on the front. Yes, the power button's on the bottom, but it doesn't matter. And it's built for Apple Silicon, basically. Th this new Mac Mini looks utterly wonderful. And in terms of performance, I don't do benchmarks, but the people who have done benchmarks have found that the M4 chip is about 49% faster than the M2 version, and it has 17% higher memory bandwidth. And it's built for Apple intelligence from the ground up, so even though the M2 version will run Apple intelligence, in theory, it might be a bit quicker on the M4 version, and you have more headroom and more future-proofing. So between the M2 and the M4 Mac Mini, I would get the M4 version just spend a little bit more money and you get that lovely new design. You get Apple intelligence built from the ground up, which I think may mean something at some point in time. And you just get a better spec. Now, if you want more power, so if you are a graphics person, a music person, a video editor, someone who needs as much power in that little box as possible, you have the choice of the M2 Pro or the M4 Pro Mac Mini. This is actually the M2 Pro version. It's incredibly impressive. However, the M4 version, which starts at 1399, comes with 24 gig of unified memory as standard. This one comes with 16. And the M4 Pro version has that new design. It's got Thunderbolt 5 ports rather than Thunderbolt 4. And if you're a, again, if you're a music producer or a video editor and external storage speed is very, very important. That is, it's quite a big upgrade. Now the M2 Pro Mac Mini is still a beast of a Mac, and if you can find one for good money, get it. However, if you want that new design and you want a bit more future-proofing and you want faster IO, get the M4 Pro version. Now onto the next very big question. 
You've chosen your chip, now it's time to choose the unified memory and the good news is this is much simpler than you might think. It's not worth getting lost down this unified memory rabbit hole. If you buy the M4 Mac Mini, which I think you probably should, you get 16 gig of unified memory as standard. That's double what you used to get. There's no eight versus 16 thing anymore. That's completely gone, thankfully. So if you get the base model M4 Mac Mini, you get 16 gig of unified memory. If you buy the base model M4 Pro Mac Mini, you get 24 gig of unified memory. Now 16, for most people who buy the M4 base model, is enough. And I've always said, you know if you need more memory. If you think you need 24 or 32 or 64 if you go for the M4 Pro version, you know you need that because you're a video editor, you're a music producer, you're a coder, you're someone who needs lots of memory. And you don't need me to tell you how much you need, but if you're not sure, just get 16. And the great thing about the Mac Mini is because it's so easy to expand in terms of storage, this thing just sits on your desk and you plug external drives into it to increase the storage. It means the initial budget that you put into your Mac Mini can be geared towards unified memory. So if you do want more than 16, put the money into that rather than spending a huge amount of money on Apple's storage prices. Accessories. So when you buy an M2 or an M4 Mac Mini, you get the Mac Mini and a power cable. That is it. So you need to get a keyboard, a mouse and a monitor and possibly some other stuff. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description so you can go and check it out. Starting with the keyboard, you could get the Magic Keyboard from Apple, but it's quite expensive and it doesn't sound like this. This is the Keychron K3 Max. It's a mechanical keyboard. There's loads of options with mechanical keyboards. I have done a little roundup on my website, which I'll link to down below as well. But yeah, get yourself a mechanical keyboard over the Magic Keyboard. When it comes to the mouse, don't get the Magic Mouse because it's terrible. Instead, get the Logitech MX Master 3S. And thank me later. As for the monitor, get yourself an Apple Studio Display. You can get them for decent money these days. They're still expensive, but it's the ultimate Mac Mini setup. A Mac Mini and a Studio Display is just a beautiful thing. However, if that's a bit too expensive, I always recommend looking at the BenQ PD3225U, which is a terrible name but it's a very good monitor and it's about 400 quid 400 dollars cheaper than the studio display the other thing that you might need is external storage and i know these haven't been popular over the last 12 months or so but for the last five years nearly i've used sandisk extreme ssds and they are faultless. Well, they have been for me. I know people have had issues with these, but I use them every single day for video editing and all sorts of stuff. And touch wood, shouldn't say this, they've never let me down. If you go for the M1 or the M2 Mac Mini over the M4 Mac Mini, you won't get front-facing USB-C ports. So in that case, I recommend getting a Satechi hub where you put your Mac Mini on top of it and you get those extra ports. The next part of the buying decision for the Mac Mini is do you just get the Mac Studio instead? So if you start specking up your M4 Pro Mac Mini and you start thinking, hang on a minute, this is creeping into Mac Studio territory. I completely understand why you're now thinking, let's just get the Mac Studio. And this is really simple. Firstly, if you're asking yourself that question, I wouldn't bother. Because just like the unified memory thing, if you know you need a Mac Studio, you know you need a Mac Studio. It's a very different computer to the Mac Mini. So firstly, it goes up to 192 gig of unified memory. The storage, you can go right up to eight terabytes. It's a beast of a thing. However, it's still running the M2 Max and the M2 Ultra chips. So it doesn't have the M4 version of those chips yet at the time of filming this video. Remember, the M4 Pro Mac Mini, if you spec it up, is an incredibly capable computer and it has a a later generation chip than the Mac Studio. If you need a Mac Studio, get it. If you're not sure, get the Mac Mini. I think I've reached a bit of a conclusion here, which is that this is one of those rare buying guides where I'm saying don't save too much money by going for the older version of the Mac Mini because the new version is so good and it offers so much more over this one. Yes, you can save a bit of money and get yourself the M2 or the M2 Pro Mac Mini. And if you've got no budget whatsoever, or very little budget, you can get yourself the M1 version, which is still a fantastic Mac. But if you're watching this video, I'm gonna take a guess that you were probably 90% of the way towards hitting that buy now button for the M4 or the M4 Pro Mac Mini. If that's the case, just do it. I don't think you'll regret it. I think the M4 Mac Mini has the ability to be the best Mac 
Apple has ever made. Now remember, I've got loads of M4 Mac Mini content on the way, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you've still got some time, hang around for a link to another video that I think you'll find very interesting.